Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will see how to download some data from the web server and display the information with the help of the recycler view and card view widgets. Then I will show a way to implement endless scrolling so that when user scrolls to the end of the current content, new data starts downloading. First let's see the final app. As you see on the screen, each card widget consists of the image and a text. And when we scroll to the bottom of the screen, new data is updated from the web server. Ok, now let's check out the database. I created a table named my underscore data that has three columns. First is the default ID column. We will use these ID numbers in order to implement endless scrolling, so make sure that your data is in ascending order and each data item is incremented by number 1. Ok, next there is a column named description, which is just some random text for our data item. And at the end there is an image column which consists of location links where the images are stored. If you want to use the same database from this tutorial, you can download the table script from the GitHub project page. It will be included in folder named scripts. Alright, before we jump to the Android Studio, we must create a PHP script that will collect the data from the web server and return it as a response. First create a connection variable with mysql connect function. Then create a variable in which we store the ID number of the currently selected data item. Now let's explain this a little bit. This is where we build a logic for the endless scrolling. So it works on this way. When we launch our mobile app for the first time, there is no data loaded. The mobile app sends a network request to this script, with the ID being 0, by using the get function. The script then takes that ID and creates a query which selects the next four data items, based on the provided ID. Then the script returns these four next data items as a response. The phone shows the data with the help of the recycler view. When a new data needs to be downloaded, app creates another network request. This time, let's say, its latest ID number is 4, and our script will build query and return the next four data items. So, those will be items with the ID of 5, 6, 7 and 8. And then the cycle continues until all data is used. Ok, let's continue with the code. Now we create a new query, in which we select the next 4 data items. We just say select uh, items between this and that range. Then execute the query with the mysql query function. Then use the mysql fetch function to read the response from the database. Append an array with the red row. Array is returned in JSON format, so put the appropriate content type. And then in order to return the array as a response, use the JSON encode function. Now let's test this script. First I will call the script and provide number 0 as id. It returns data items with the id of 1, 2, 3 and 4. If we try id number 4, then we get ids of 5, 6, 7 and 8. Exactly as I said before. Ok, so no more scripts, uh, let's go to the Android Studio. Open the manifest file and add the internet permission. Then go to the build.gradle settings and import these three libraries. If we take a look at the main activities layout, you can see that I put the recycler view widget inside of it. 
and then I also created another layout for the card view itself. As you see, I put the image view and the text view inside of the relative layout and everything is wrapped into the card view widget itself. Okay, so switch to the main activity. Let's write down some objects that we will use. We will need a recycler view, then a grid layout manager, which will allow us to order these cards into the grid. Next, we will need a custom adapter so that we can bind our data from the web server with the recycler view. And of course, we need a list which contains the data that we receive from the web server. Create this class my data, which represents a single data item. Now create fields that we need for this class. As you already know, each data item has an ID, a description, and the image link. On keyboard, use the shortcut Alt plus Insert, and then choose the option to create the class constructor. Do the same steps and generate getters and setters so that we can access these fields in the future. Next, reference the recycler view with the defined view by ID method and then create the list. We need to fill this list with the information from the web server. So we will create a new method and inside of it as an argument we will pass number zero. We call this function each time the content needs updating. Parameter represents the ID of the latest visible data item. Since we are requesting the data at the app launch time, we choose number zero, which means that PHP script will return the first four data items. Network request must be done in background thread. In order to achieve that, we can create a new thread or we can use an async task. This time we will go with the option number two. So create a new async task. For the first argument, use the integer. This will allow us to pass the latest visible data item ID to this network request. To start the task, call the execute method and pass in the parametered ID. And now inside of the async task, let's create a new OKHTTP client along with the request builder. Provide the URL where your PHP script is hosted and also append the URL with the parametered ID. To execute the request, create a new response object by using the new call method. Ok, at this point the request has been sent. A response that we get from the web server is in JSON format. So, to cope with that, we will create a new JSON array and pass in the body from the response instance itself. Now we need to read the array and add the red data to the list. We can use the simple loop to read the JSON array. Our JSON array consists of objects which are the data items from the database. To select the data item, create a new JSON object instance by calling the getJSONObject method from the JSON array. At this point we can create a new data item instance. The constructor takes three arguments, ID, description and an image link. We can get these arguments from the JSON object instance that we created above. After this, we must add this data item to our list. Simply call the add method and pass in the just created data object. Ok, now scroll back to the onCreate method. Let's create a new grid layout manager in order to display the data in a grid. And then just apply it on the recycler view. 
Next step is to bind this data that we receive from the web server to the recycler view itself. That's where the custom adapter comes into the play. Create a new custom adapter instance and pass in the current context along with the our data list. Apply it on the recycler view with the set adapter method. Ok, create this custom adapter class. Define two fields which we referenced from the main activity, which are the context and the list. Then create a constructor for the class. Now extend the class with the recycler view adapter. On keyboard press Alt plus Enter key combination and choose the first option. This will create the view holder class from where we can update the card view with the data which we provide through the data list. Our card view has an image view and a text view, so let's just reference them here. Again, hover around the custom adapter class and press the Alt plus Enter on keyboard. This time choose Implement Methods option. These are three methods that we must override. In the getItemCount method, make sure that you return the size of the list that we provide. Next, we use onCreateViewHolder class in order to reference the card view layout. So create a new view and use the layout inflator to reference the card view layout. Now just return a new instance of the view holder with the referenced view. On bind view holder is a method in which we can manipulate with the views. In our case, each card consists of the text and an image. So first reference the text view, which is in this case description of the image from the view holder argument. Then call the set text method. Use our list and call the getter in order to read the data item description. After this, we should apply the image to the image view. Since we have image links saved into the list, easiest way to load images is to use the image library. In this case, we will just use the glide library. It will allow us to easily download images from the internet. So go to the build.gradle settings and add the library dependency. Now just call the glide library with the load method. The load method takes the HTTP link as a parameter. We can use our list to get the image link from the selected data item. Then we just call the .into method and we provide the image view where we want image to be loaded. Alright, go to the main activity. One more step is to go to the our network request method and look for the on post execute method. On post execute is called when the network request is done. We should use this method in order to tell our custom adapter that there is a change in a data list so that it can load new card view widgets on the screen. To achieve this just call the notify dataset method. Ok, let's quickly test this. As you can see we only get the first four data items and that's because we called the network request only once. What we want is to add a scroll listener to the recycler view and when it gets triggered, we will simply call the network request method again to load more data. To make that possible, implement the onScroll listener with the onScrolled method. In this method, we want to check if the last visible card widget position corresponds to the number of the list items. For an example, listener gets activated latest visible cards position is number 4. And since we already have 4 items in the list, we should make another network request to load the data.
simply call the network method again and make sure that as an argument you pass the ID from the latest visible data item. Now our endless scrolling is finished. Let's try this again. And as you can see, everything is working nicely. Thank you all for watching and I see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.